guys, Dave here with Wags Automotive. No Name Nationals. The second annual No Name Nationals. We're back here in Sykes, Missouri. Got my $100 RV behind me. And I'm gonna walk around here, do a few videos. There's some really unusual cool cars here. I'm gonna try to do a few uh, interviews with people. Put them on my channel so you guys can see kind of the unusual stuff. And remember, these guys are all YouTubers. They all got a YouTube channel. I'll, I'll try to get their channels and give that information to you guys. You get on there and watch their channel. Subscribe to their to their channel if you like what you see and you know help them out a little bit. So let's walk around and see what we got here, all right? Let's go. Alright guys, here's the first guy I'm gonna talk to today. His name's William. He's got a is it 68? 68. 68 Charger RT. This is a pretty rough car, so uh Michael, what can you uh, William. William. I don't like keep calling you Mike. Keep calling him Michael. Sorry guys. William, what can you tell me about this car? It's, it's interesting looking. This is a 1968 uh, Charger RT. Originally, it had a 440. Uh, original motor's long gone, but but it is still a 440 in here. It's got a Hemi automatic transmission. Um, my dad bought this car back in the day. One day to replace his first Charger that was told in the late 70s. Okay. This is been family ever since. Uh, I won the burnout competition last year. And uh, we'll do our best to do the same this year. How long has it been sitting before you got it running? Uh, it's sat, it's sat in, uh, in my backyard for the better part of about 25 years. 25 years, huh? And uh, my dad parked it in the, uh, uh, the early 80s, uh, about the uh, mid 80s or so, mid to late 80s, to uh, work on it. And it ended up uh, sitting for 25 years, and he had a family to raise, so uh, right. priorities went, up, went elsewhere. Okay. And, I got old enough to start working on it. I started working on it. That's where my YouTube channel picks up. And, yeah. Uh, just uh, from there, I've been chronicling my adventures with it. Okay. Huh. So here's his, here's his channel, guys. Charger 383 Mopar. You guys can look him up on YouTube. And he's here today at the No Name Nationals. Are you going to race it today? Uh, no, it's. Uh, I'm happy just being here. Okay. I did, I did just take my Cushman down the track. That's, that's tons of fun, man. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what what engines it got in it now? 440. 440. Okay. Is it stock? Is it built? It's a, uh, it's, I've got a mild cam in it. It's the uh, Comp Cams. Nostalgia Plus. It's a uh, 4424 cam. Okay. Uh, uh, cast iron 452 heads. Uh, Holly Street Dominator intake with the Bear Grant Demon. Okay. What kind of rear end you running? Three twenty three gears, okay. I, I, love, I okay. love that three twenty three gear. Yeah. Really, really good on the road. I can still hit 70, 80, 80 miles an hour. Okay. I'll walk around and look at it real quick and we'll talk to you about your Cushman. I bought Cliff for you. Alright. Here's some old school stuff right here, guys. Check this out. Messing up my interview, man. 
messing up his energy. So this was his dad's car. You said he parked it in the 80s? Yeah, he parked it in the, about the mid to late 80s uh, to work on it. There was really nothing wrong with the car. It was, it was a running, driving car when he parked it. Okay. It just, he had some issues with the brakes and, right. and stuff, and uh, was trying to get that worked out. And okay. Other priorities came up, and right. he had to put it aside. Okay. And when did you start working on it? Um, had to been mid to late 2000s, I think. Okay. All right. But I've been on YouTube with it for over uh, for uh, for over ten years. Okay. Yeah. And there's his YouTube channel. And here's a whole bunch of other people's YouTube channels here. If you guys want to look at this, you can look all these guys up. There, most of them are here today. Mufflers, Maybe all of them. Mufflers I got on here. Mufflers I put on everything. My Jones full bore performance mufflers. Okay. They're all the quality of the big name brands. A fully MIG welded 16 gauge aluminum steel. Yeah fraction of the cost okay i paid like 38 40 bucks each on my mufflers brand okay. new okay i think i've like, heard of those that was before. like directly from like a jags or something okay all right so anyhow there's some more of those guys if you want to look them up pause the video and get those names look those people up so what's the story on this cushman over here man i picked up that cushman a little over a year ago and uh I picked it up with the purpose of putting in a 440 into it. <laughs> that was my intent when I bought it. Okay. But I started, when I picked it up, it was a basket case. Everything taken apart off right. of it. It was just a complete disaster. I started putting stuff back together just to have, just to inventory to see what I had. And I realized it was actually a, a pretty fantastic original condition for a 1965. Okay. And I put it together, just started fixing the stuff that was wrong or, or broken, and I, I fell in love with it. So now instead of putting a 440 in this, I've picked up a 79 cushion that I'm actually putting in a 440 into. I've got I've got a I've got a project series on that already started. It's, I'm calling it the Red Rocket. You're gonna put a 440 in a Cushman, huh? 440 powered Cushman. Think uh, Gasser Cushman. Gasser, huh? Straight axle. The so works. what? What year is this one? That this is a 1965. 65. Wow. Three-speed manual on the column. Yeah. And a uh, 18 horsepower air-cooled OMC motor. <laughs> runs good. Got runs excellent. One coil per cylinder. Yep, and it's it, interesting about this ignition system. It actually fires both coils at the same time. Right. I think that's called a, a, a waste spark system, but only one spark plug is, is uh, produces power at a time. Right. One's on nice. the intake stroke, or compression yeah. stroke, and one's on the exhaust stroke. Yeah, so it's 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 just tons of fun. Huh. Well, that's a pretty cool Cushman. I like it. Top speed on my, on the track that I, I just went down earlier, my top speed was uh, 38.6 miles an hour. Woo, you was flying. Blistering, man. 38.6. <laughs> 38 miles an hour on a Cushman just feels so much faster. Yeah, I'm sure it does. Well, that's a cool car, man. I appreciate you talking to me about it. All right. All right, guys, we'll, we'll check out something else here pretty quick. Now we got Don English here, and he's got kind of an unusual car. I want to show you guys a Mopar. And what is this thing, Don? 62 Plymouth okay. Valiant. 62 Plymouth Valiant. You said it belonged to your uncle? Bought it off my uncle nine years ago. Okay. He was selling it. I had to keep it in the family. Okay. How long has he had it? You know? He had it 15 years before. 15 years. Okay. And he put a different motor in it? It had a, it it's had had a, a small block, it's had a 383, it's had a 413, and he settled on a 440. Okay, originally it had a slant 6 in it? Slant 6. Okay, and he decided to put a 440 in it, and i got to show you guys something. This is kind of interesting. So, here's his car, four-door, 63 Valiant. 62 Valiant? Sorry, 62 Valiant. Okay. Huh? Let me take the air cleaners in. If you want to. And it, by the way, his website, YouTube channel is One Eyed Cat. You guys can see that. He's going to take the air clears off. Check this out, guys. It's a dual quad intake manifold, okay? See that? There's something you've probably never seen before in your life. I know I've never seen it. There's something weird. Check that out. So he's got a, he's got a four barrel in the front and a one barrel in the back. And they made an adapter out of aluminum plate to put on the one barrel to make it fit the four barrel manifold. And I asked Don, I said, why did he do that? And he said, because it's what he had. 
So it's what he had, so he, he made it work. It's a very unusual combination. He's going to change. He's got a different motor to put in it next year. But um, So what do you know about this car, Don? It's a lot of fun. Yeah? Yep. You, know, you know any history on it? Just the fact there's been half a dozen motors in it. Half a dozen motors, okay. And is it, uh, where, where are you guys from? Ohio? The car's from Ohio. We're from Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, okay. All right, cool. And how long have you been racing it? Today. Today. Made first first, first time today. Hour. How'd you do? Run a 10.8. 10.8 and a quarter mile, okay. Yep. What kind of gears are you running a transmission? In the trans, I'm not sure, but the rear end's got a 245. 245? What? Okay. Is that a one-legger? Yep. Okay. That's and what? the one-wheel peel. 727 transmission? Yep. Okay. All right. Well, let's walk, walk around and take a look at this 62 Valiant. Actually, it's a really clean car. It's in really good condition. I, I would assume it's spent a lot of its life maybe racing because it's so clean. Check out the inside. Got the old. It got dirty, but we we just got done putting new floors in it. Okay. Wife cleaned up the seats, which she did an excellent job yeah. on. Yeah. Those are the original seats. Yep. Wow! Look original at that. Seats. Yeah, they're not bad. Mustang shifter. Mustang shifter, okay. For some yep. reason he liked it on the floor, so. Yep. Huh. Do what you got to do to make it work, right? Yep. Back seat's even nice, too. Clean looking. Back up here a little bit. Uncle Tony's garage, you guys seen that before. So she's got a little bit of rust around the fenders there, been patched up. But, and and uh, it's got the Continental kit. <laughs> I've never seen a Continental kit on a on a value before but that's a homemade continental kit i think he added, he added it for weight okay so he he extended the bumper out 11 inches 11 inches and put the spare back there so he could have more weight back in the back and this is a uh, still i mean gas tank kind of cool they got it looking like a still kind of neat i like that that's cool saddle tank off a tractor trailer saddle tank off a tractor trailer okay you just cut it down Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So That's pretty right neat. In the spare tire well. Yep. Batteries in the truck. What's this over here? Well, that's the same. did this for John Wilburn. Okay. You can't post this. Yet. Not yet. He's always making the jokes about his EV. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go too far with it. Okay. It's a, it's a kind of an EV if you want it to be, but not really. First that's Jen. First gen, first, first gen, gen EV. EV. There you go. <laughs> EV eater. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> the kind of yeah, plug in there. It was a joke we come up with like not even a week ago. Ten oh, yeah? months we're, we're vacuum cleaner. <laughs> so we got retractable cord off vacuum cleaner and we zip tied it in there. Works great. <laughs> All that's, for a joke for John. That's awesome. I love it. And John hasn't even seen it yet. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you got to get the uh, gas gauge. Oh, that's gas, gas gauge. Gas gauge. Gas gauge. There's the gas gauge. He's got a. He's got a mark on the. He's got a mark on the stick. See that? Four gallons. Empty. Three. Quarter. Half. Three quarters and full. Oh, no. four, four gallon, gallon increments. increments. Oh, four gallon increments. Okay. Gallons. Close enough. Almost full and almost half full. Something like that. Well, I'll tell you what, it's a clean car. I like it. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yep, that's pretty neat. And I like the uh, I like the custom tape job there to cover up the, well, the Continental kit. Where the bumper is right. here, it yep. kind of molded for that. Yeah. And he puttied it in. Okay. And the putty was starting to break when he was doing a road trip, so I just taped it and painted it white. <laughs> Paid it. That's been four or five years ago, and it's still holding. Something. Okay, looks good. Looks good. Oh, Not bad. It's a pretty cool old car. I had a '65 Valiant. I think it was one of my first cars I ever had. Had a slant six in it, but it's pretty cool. I like it. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks for talking to me. I appreciate it. He's so, got a man. fraternal twin at the house, the original. It's got a what? A fraternal a twin. One. Oh, you got another one? There's a second one, yeah. I mean, it's got continental kit and everything, just like it's white. He made them to look identical. He'd go pick a fight with a six-cylinder and come back to the house and get this one. <laughs> Nobody think he got two of them. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's a good His idea. thing was, I got me by an old man. All right, well, there's my sticker. You got, you got one for me? Yep, I got a stack of them. All right.
cat. I wanna. Look at the dash there, guys. Don't be stupid. <laughs> it's awesome. This is a cool car. So it's only five barrel you've ever seen in your whole life. <laughs> in an A body. <laughs> in an A body. Well, I've never seen a five barrel on anything, so you know. <laughs> it was fun doing the fuel line. Yeah, I bet. Wow, and the linkage and all that, but yeah, it's cool. I like it. All right, guys. Well, thanks for, t for showing it to me. I appreciate it. Thanks, Talk to you later. All right, guys, I'm over here with the trash truck. Trash 1984, truck. right? Yeah, 84. 84 S10. Bought it out of a hay field. What'd you get for it? You remember? $600. $600, okay. The motor was locked up. So he decided to do something a little different. I'll show this to you. I've never seen this before. So this is a 2.8 liter V6 engine with a supercharger on it. Check that out. That's the tiniest supercharger I've ever seen in my life. But he said that. This supercharger was made by, a, what's the name of the company, you remember? Fogel. Fogel. I think it's Fogel. Fogel, okay. This supercharger is made by a company named Fogel, and you were supposed to take the carburetor off the manifold, bolt this in place of the carburetor, then bolt the carburetor back on top and go. And it came with these, these pulleys and all that stuff to go with it. Crank pulley down there, you can see that. So all that came with it. Yep. So he put this little supercharger on this 2.8 liter. Yep. How, you th how you think it runs? Does it run pretty good? It runs better than a stock three times. <laughs> runs better than it did before, okay. Yeah. You got a little, ho is that a little Holly two barrel on it? Yeah, 500 CFM. Okay, 500 CFM two barrel. Uh, well, let's walk around and take a look at it real quick. And then he says he's going to start it up, but I won't be able to talk because he said it's too loud when it's running. But we'll check it out real quick. Little 84 S10. Pretty clean on the inside, doesn't look too bad. He came, you guys from Tennessee, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Just, just north of Nashville. Okay, just north of Nashville. So, and here's their uh, YouTube channel, JB's Little Shop, and LP94. So you guys check them out and look at their videos on YouTube. Yeah! Okay. I don't know if I got that or not. I think I did. All right. So we're going to walk around here. We've got the broken tail light. That's legal, all right? That's right. You See, betcha. Trash truck. Trash truck. That's right. He didn't do nothing to it but slap an engine in it, I guess. All right. So let's hear it. Let's hear you fire it up. Let's see what she sounds like. You got open headers, I guess. Okay. Got headers with a pipe on it, and that's all he's got. This little 2.8 liter V6 with a supercharger. You can hear the whine of the supercharger. That ain't too bad. 1984 S10, 2.8 liter supercharged. Ah! And you said, how much boost does this thing run? Uh, they made three sizes, five, ten, fifteen. I don't know what that one is. Okay. Okay. Does it have a like a blow-off valve to adjust the pressure? No. All he's got, he's got a, got a line here in the back to hook up the boost gauge. I just never had, had a chance to put the boost gauge in. Oh, okay. You just put a gauge on it, you know what it is then. So he's not sure how much boost it has. It said about 5 or 10, maybe 15 pounds of boost. It's, it's running, right now it's running in the low 11s. Low 11s, okay. Tomorrow I should have it in at least in the low, uh, upper 10. Okay, you gonna put some slicks out or something? No, I just need to readjust some stuff. Okay, what kind of transmission are you running? 700 R4. And what kind of rear ends it got? Uh, it's got a standard rear end, but we put a mini spool in there. So mini spool? Okay, back. you know what, what kind of gears are you going? Uh, the 355s, I think. 355s? Okay. I'm going to install some 410s in it this next year. Okay. All right, cool. Well, man, Jesse, I appreciate it. That's a cool, cool truck. I like it. So we'll, uh, we'll have to look for you next year, see if you can do better. There you go, guys. Trash truck from Tennessee. Talk to you later. Guys. All right, guys. Here's my next video. We got Clint from Clint Street Machines. How you doing? And where are you at? Where are you out of? We're out of uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. Basically. Knoxville, Tennessee. And this car is probably the most crazy car I've seen here so far. It isn't running yet, but he brought it here as a, as a builder because he wanted to show everybody what he's doing. Yeah. Check this out. A Subaru Brat with massive tires on the back and a Dodge 400 engine in it. This thing is crazy. So what can you tell us about this car, Clint? 
a pre-car a uh, friend of mine had that he was going to send to the scrappers. It was left over from uh, rebuilding an actual rat. And this is uh, the worst of the three that he started with. And it was literally just rotting away in the woods behind his house. Okay. And he gave it to me and I thought, uh, yeah, I'll make a fire pit out of it. One thing leads to another. Another year is sitting in my yard and uh, then this happened. <laughs> so it's on an S10 frame. Yep. It's got a 400 Dodge engine, four-speed transmission in it. Yep. No floors. No, you can no, see it's pretty, stuff yet. pretty ru rusty and ratty. Absolutely. But he's got framework going in here. But this is going to be very interesting when he gets this thing going. He said he bought this topper off of the internet for 400 bucks. So put it on there. But as you can see, this thing was rotting in the ground when he found it. You can see it's got a lot of rot on it. Oh, yeah. But he's got her going. Got her looking kind of cool. But this is just a crazy, crazy build right here. This is going to be a smoking sucker when he's done with it. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I really hope so. Yeah. What's your rear end? Uh, that's just the stock one. I'm sure I'll spit that out the first time I lay on the gas. So oh, okay. We're going to have to come up with something else back here. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> but it'll roll around on that for now. Okay. And drive around as long as I don't push the gas pedal. Yeah. Look at the rake on that thing, man. That thing is just crazy. I think it was nine degrees when I measured it. Nine degrees. He said he had to cut the frame, notch the frame, and bend it to get it the stance he wanted because the rake was so crazy that he didn't like it, so he had to cut the frame. You can see yeah, right kind of right there where he had to cut the frame and notch it and bend it so it would get the position it's in now. But he's obviously got a ways to go on it, oh, yeah. but he'll be back next year. The No Name Nationals third event, and maybe have a run and driving by then. Well, I better have a run and driving. Yeah, I hope so. So, <laughs> you guys check out Clint's Street, Street Machines Machine. right there. Check yeah. him out on YouTube and look at his car. Watch him build this thing. That's that's crazy. Thanks so much. Man, that's that's appreciate. cool. Yeah. All right, Clinton. Well, nice talking to you. You too. Cool Take care, car, guys. and we'll see you guys on YouTube. Thanks for checking us out. All right, talk to you later. Bye. All right, guys, so I'm back here over here on the other side of the track, and we got a, a few cars here. We're going to check out these guys are all together, and you're with Muscle... Muscle Cars. Muscle Cars, okay. So we'll, we'll look at their uh, website here in a minute, but first car we're going to check out here is the 64 Impala Wagon, and uh, this gentleman here owns it. Go ahead and tell me about it. Uh, so we um, picked this up out of a lot uh, in Mount Home. Mm -hmm. The guy had several cars, actually pretty nice, but anyways... This one had been in his family for about 30 years, just rotting under a tree. And uh, the only thing we really replaced on body-wise was this fender here. It had been in a wreck. Okay. And, uh, so we got a donor car for that. But the rest of it's all original. Uh, we did a front disc conversion on it. Okay. Dropped a 350 in it. So all right. The original two-speed. Okay. And uh, redid the interior. Yep. Yeah, we'll really take a look at the interior. It looks nice. I looked at it earlier. Yeah. It's got a little small block in it, but it's a cool little wagon. Got great patina. This car is just the patina on it's awesome. There you go, there's the motor. You can see that. Nice looking little small block. Yep. Got a little set of headers on it. Poly carburetor. Yeah, looking good, man. Upgraded the brakes. That's always a plus. Like you said, it's got disc brakes on the front now. But man, the patina on this car is just awesome. It's beautiful. It's actually pretty. Uh, low on rust as far as I'm concerned not not a lot of rust on it you know you can tell it sat for a long time but look at the interior guys it's beautiful real nice looking dash is that dash like that when you got it well it's that same color but we sanded it down and just resprayed it okay yeah. okay it's pretty but got really nice seats in it as you can see real nice interior they're still working on it you know it needs a headliner needs other things but it's looking really good I just really like this car you don't see wagons a lot I got a 69 Chevelle wagon of course you guys know about that but this is just a really cool car. I've had more than one 64 Chevy before. I like this uh, thing on the back. I don't know how to pronounce that. I don't either. Fosho? Yeah, Fosho maybe. Fosho <laughs> Motors, I guess, I don't know. Yeah. Muscles and Cars on YouTube. So there you go, 64 wagon, Impala. Walk around this side, look at the patina. That's very cool, I love it. Very nice, I like it. All right, and then what we got next? We got a 55 Chevy. Yeah, 55. Yep. Chevy Bel Air. We uh, picked this up also in Mount Home. Okay. Um, it was basically one of those marketplace deals. It was on there, and he said trade for other hot rods. I had a '73 Ford Maverick Grabber clone, but it was a V8 car with AC. 
and we took the Maverick up there and made a deal. The Maverick did run and drive. This did not. This had motor pulled. It did come with an engine. It was just a small block Chevy. Okay. Um, our buddy at Blue Collar Performance with the Pinto uh -huh. uh, donated the engine. This is the engine that was ran on nitro on an engine stand. Okay. So he donated that for the burnout. So okay. He threw it in here. It's got a uh, tuned stock ECU. Okay. Bought a radiator from a buddy. Super budget build. Is, is, is right. That's a 5.3 you said? Yep. As fast as we could do it, it was in here. Okay, and they turn the manifolds upside down, and yep. they got the pipes coming straight out the top. That ought to be cool to watch tonight in the burnout contest. So, be interesting to do. I got a '55 Chevy as well, but I just like this one. This one's got great patina again. That's a good thing about when you when you get down to south, southern Missouri, northern mm -hmm. Arkansas, and further south, you get you get a lot of cars with this really nice patina because it doesn't doesn't snow down there, so they don't have to worry about salt getting on the roads. But I mean, this car's just got real nice patina as well. As you can see, of course, my 55, I had to put a, a tail pan on it and a trunk pan, some work like that. Did some work on it, but uh, I'm still working on it. But this is just a really cool car. Just like the way it looks. Let's take a look at the interior on it. And there are muscles and cars as well. And he's got a shifter on the floor there. Got some hush mat, looks like. And dash on this thing looks pretty much original. Not bad, though. Pretty cool, man. That's pretty cool. I like it. I like this car. All right, who owns the? That's Nate. Nate's Is he around? Uh, he's right there. Hey, Nate. Nate. That's cool. I like that. So we got the 55 Chevy and the 64 Impala wagon. And up next, we got the crazy free Pinto, right? Free. And your name is Nate? Nate. Okay, and what can you tell me about the Pinto, Nate? Uh, well... It really depends on what part of it you're interested in. Well, you said you got it for free. How'd that happen? Well, it used to sit out behind an old service station next to Burger King there in my hometown. Okay. And I, every time I go through Burger King, I'd see it. Well, my daughter comes over one day, and she's telling me about her new boyfriend who's out in Oregon fighting wildfires. And she tells me he's got a pinto. She says he's going he's gonna to cut it off and make it like an El Camino, you know? And I'm like, okay. I'm like, is it blue? And she said, yeah. I said, is it the one behind the old Beelers? And she said, yeah. I said, I've been looking at it. Anyway, next time she shows up, they sold the service station. He had to get the car moved and didn't have anywhere to go with it. So he said, if I could move it, I could have it. So I called a tow truck, man. 60 bucks later, it's in my front yard. Okay. And it's been downhill since. It's been downhill since? <laughs> we're not, we're not okay. there anymore. What kind of motor you got in it? It's a 4.8. 4.8? Yeah. Okay, that's an LS motor. I, I had a 4.8 earlier this year that I sold. Yep. They're good run on engines. That's a so. junkyard trash, man. I pulled it out of a wrecked truck at the junkyard and put a new timing set in it and slam dunked it in there. Yeah? Got a turbo on it? Yep. Have you raced it here today? No. Are you going to try to race it or? No, probably not. I, I didn't put a battery disconnect in it because it's a street car, and like I felt like putting the battery disconnect in it creeps it further toward race car, and I don't want okay. it to become a race car. Okay. I've got an S10 for that. Uh, okay. This is staying street car. Okay. But, so it's a street car, not a race car. Yep. But it's got great patina again. You That's know, Arkansas good. car, so looks really nice. It's got really, really good. What's the rear axle in it? 8.8. 8.8, okay. 8 Ford, yep. Okay, and what kind of transmission are you running? 350 Turbo. 350 Turbo. You, you can see it's got the Diamond Tuck interior. Did you do that, or was that like that when you bought it? I had it done. I okay. Had, yeah, the guy had our local street rod upholstery guy do everything. Oh, yeah. He did an outstanding job. Real nice. Real nice job on the seats and everything. Looks great. Back seat, Diamond Tucked. Yeah, you don't see that very often. So this guy's blue blue collar performance. Yeah, check this out. So, so he's going to show me something here in the back, but look at the patina on this thing, guys. It's just beautiful. I love this. And the, the Pinto bumper was jacked up, and you can't buy it. I mean, you can't buy it. Right. So that's actually a 68 Camaro rear bumper. <laughs> I, had to, I had to redo the brackets and make it work. But, yeah, I went in here, and I, I dolled everything up and repainted it. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to do that in the engine compartment this winter. Okay. But, man, I mean, look at the inside of this car. The plastic's really nice. In excellent condition, man. This thing's this thing's great. Yeah, twenty-seven thousand original mile car. Twenty-seven thousand original miles. No wonder it looks like it does. I'm the third owner. It's uh. Wow, that's cool. And what year is it? Seventy-two. Seventy-two. Seventy-two Pinto with twenty-seven thousand original miles on it. No name nationals. There you go. No <laughs> name nationals. Number two. <laughs> yep. So yeah, this is cool. I like it. Let's walk around this side and check out the patina. Yeah, that's what you get when the car sits most of its life. You don't see a lot of rust on them, man. This is awesome. I've had a couple like this with low mileage. I like them low mileage cars, but this one's cool. 
All right, guys. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this session. These, these three guys are running together, so I wanted to get all three of these cars together. But, you know, you never know what you're going to see at the No Name NASA. It's pretty cool. Well, thank you, sir, for talking to us about the car. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Very well. All right, guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye.